Uh, Ghazali, these protesters, they allege that uh, this quota system, it is a means to get more people into the, uh, into the system. And, uh, uh, and most, most of these people who are associated uh, with the people in the power, people, these politicians, they are going to benefit from it. Uh, before I ask you anything else, I just want to get a sense on how does it affect India and uh, how does it affect Bangladesh going forward now? See, uh, the forces which are behind these protests as being alleged by the Bangladesh authorities are the opposition parties or the leaders who have also joined the protest there. So the Awami League, the party of Sheikh Hasina, which is in power in Bangladesh, she had proposed this system or she backs the system where the uh, families, relatives of those who had fought the liberation war of 71 against Pakistan, they should be given a 30% reservation in the government jobs. Now. Uh, uh, Sheikh Hasina, while addressing the nation, had also used a derogatory term for those who collaborated with Pakistan during the war called Razakars. And that is uh, that is what has infuriated many protesters and they're chanting that we are Razakars because the ones who are against the quota system say that even after 30-40 uh, years of the war, of uh, the liberation war, why are we sort of benefiting those uh, who have no part or who didn't participate in any such war? These are third and fourth generation members of the same family. And they also so the anti-quota uh, group also says that perhaps those who will be benefiting with this quota system are the ones who are supporting Sheikh Hasina's party, Awami League. Now, how does this impact Bangladesh and India both? For Bangladesh, we are seeing it's a widespread protest. Universities have been locked down. Uh, even those students who want to leave Bangladesh, like some Indian students, are stuck there. And they're also, in numbers, they're coming into India. They're returning into India with the co coordination, in coordination with the Indian High Commission there, as well as the Bangladesh or Dhaka authorities but how does it impact India because we know there are anti-India sentiments also prevalent so Indian uh, Indian agencies as well as officials are keeping a close eye that at no point this entire protest should turn into an anti-India thing as well. So when India has to mediate or when India has to ensure that its civilians or the citizens have to move, have to be moved out from Bangladesh, that entire task becomes very challenging because they will also have to ensure that in no way it should be seen that perhaps Indian government is assisting the, uh, the, uh, the Dhaka authorities or Sheikh Hasina's government. So that is where it is very, very uh, uh, delicate situation for diplomacy in, on both sides. For Bangladesh, certainly it's a very uncertain uh, situation right now. Situation is tense across the country and uh, multiple reports are coming that how the newspaper websites have been hacked or perhaps they have uh, shut down. Uh, the, there are certain government websites which have been hacked. India has also stopped the movement of two of its train which goes to Dhaka from India. Uh, so these are the certain latest developments. The agencies in India as well as the High Commission in Dhaka are keeping a close eye on that. Uh, more than 500 students have returned from Bangladesh in the last 24 hours. Uh, the MEA spokesperson yesterday briefed that how they are coordinating with their counterparts in Dhaka and they are also, uh, there are multiple entry points from, uh, from Bangladesh wherein the Indian students are returning uh, from Bangladesh.